Hello, I'm Tim Cockle from Wise Media, and I'm here with uh, Alessandro Galvan from the Sustainable Bioenergy Research Consortium, um, which is part of the Mazdar Group. Welcome. Thank you. So today, we are the big, one of the big topics we're talking about is um, sustainable development. Mm -hmm. And I understand from, through your consortium that this is very much geared to oil industry, but also aviation. Could you describe a little bit, first, perhaps, how the consortium is set up mm -hmm. and what the intentions are in terms of, of developing a sustainable aviation world or even strategy? Well, uh, the Sustainable Bioenergy Research Consortium, as its name suggests, is dedicated to research in bioenergy. So any energy that can be produced from biomass. The SBRC was established by the Mazdar Institute of Science and Technology, together with three founding members, the Boeing Company, the largest aircraft manufacturer in the world, Etihad Airways, who is the national airline of the UAE, Mm -hmm. and UOP, United Oil Products, who is a Honeywell company uh, dedicated to, among other things, uh, developing refining technology. So these three companies together with the Mazdar Institute founded the SBRC and a year later Safran, uh, an, an Euro a European industrial conglomerate, joined the consortium uh, as a tier two member. So what we do in the consortium is that we try to find optimized pathways for developing alternative sustainable aviation biofuels. And so the aviation industry uh, as a whole, through its governing bodies, mainly ICAO, the International Civil Aviation Organization, and IATA, the International Air Transport Association, have set very ambitious goals for the, for the aviation industry. Mm -hmm. The first goal is to reduce the emissions from aviation by 1.5% per year from now until 2020. So every year, even though we are considering the growth of the aviation industry, which is about 5% per year, we should be witnessing a lowering in emissions of mm -hmm. about 1.5% per year. That's and the first goal. The second goal that has been identified is to be able to grow on a carbon, carbon neutral path from 2020 onwards. And so what that means is that whatever emissions the aviation industry is producing in 2020, mm. those emissions will be capped. And for, let's, for argument's sake, let's mm. say that it's 800 million tons of CO2. From 2020 onwards, the aviation industry has to somehow offset these emissions so that it re they remain constant at 800 million tons for the foreseeable future. Okay. And the until, third? Sorry, I'm cutting right, you off. <laughs> uh, uh, until the long-term goal, or the third goal, which is that by 2050, the long-term goal is to have half of the emissions that were emitted in 2005 by the aviation industry. In 2005, the aviation industry emitted 600 million tons, give or take, mm -hmm. of CO2. So this means that by 2050, aviation industry wants to have, or wants to emit, 300 million tons of CO2, considering the growth of the aviation industry. That means that you're not going to hamper the growth. The growth is going to continue, hopefully, at the normal rate of 5% per year, but uh, emissions will be lowered will be to lower. half of what they were in 2005. Yeah, relatively. Yeah. Now, they've established yeah. four specific strategies to do this. One of them is to have better flying operations, meaning they want to improve how flying is done. Mm -hmm. And this is, there are several strategies to this, but basically what it means is that you're going to be able to take off and land in continuous ascent and continuous descent patterns. And this is going to be by using better radar technologies that are being developed that will enable also to fly on a straighter route from point A to point B. Today what happens, because most of the radar technologies are ground-based, aircraft 
need to be checking at each of these points. And so you have either these arches or these zigzag patterns that, that go from point A to point B. A bit like I imagine like in the old days when you used to have stopovers, when, when you didn't right. have direct flights it, and people and exactly. they had to stop to refuel. Now they exactly. don't have to refuel, but they still have to follow certain routes. Uh, and that depends point. also yeah. on, on, on the airspace, restrictions on the airspace and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But those restrictions are mostly based because of the limiting factors in the radar technology. Okay. With newer radar technology, satellite-based technologies, uh, planes are going to be able to fly much straighter, okay. thereby saving a lot of fuel. We're talking on a global scale here, but um, why is the consortium very much based here in the in the UAE? What, what, well, what, what's the relevance of it? Of so it sort of emerging very quickly, from here? the the other two or, or yeah. the other three strategies okay. are one is better infrastructure that goes along the same lines as more efficient sure. operations. Yeah. The third one is market-based measures, and so the aviation industry is looking for a global scheme in which a market-based measure will govern the emissions by the sector. And the fourth one, and I guess, or the first one, is better technology. And that includes newer aircraft, yeah. okay? Newer, more efficient aircraft with better engines. Mm -hmm. An engine today consumes about 70% less fuel for the same amount of power output than it used to do only 40 years ago. Okay. So there has been a huge, uh, in, you know, leap in terms of technological development in both the, the engines and the aircraft. Mm -hmm. Aircraft that are being produced today are much lighter than the aircraft yeah, that were being were produced before, yeah. 30 or 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. and so they are able to fly f longer distances with much less fuel. Okay. But a very important part of this strategy is, and it has to do with the uh, with the bottom line of airlines, is that about 40% of an airline's operating cost comes from fuel. And today, airlines are basically hostages to the price increases in the oil industry. Okay. And so the, the airline industry and the aviation industry as a whole is looking for suitable, sustainable alternatives to their fuel. Okay. So. There are many uh, different efforts around the world to explore bioenergy. Mm -hmm. And within the bioenergy space, a specific uh, effort is to explore alternative aviation biofuels. Yeah. Okay? So just very, sorry, just very quickly, bringing it back to, to a Middle East or mm -hmm. UAE basis, why here? So, well, Bioenergy, and specifically biofuels, are generated with biomass. Mm -hmm. When you have biomass, you can take that biomass and produce, be it a, a vegetable oil, be it a, a, a plant sugar, be it a, a plant biomass, you can take different routes, different technologies to yeah. produce a biofuel. Okay. Okay? But in everywhere in the world, bioenergy and biomass production is focused on the use of fresh water and the use of arable land. Why? Okay. Because that's how biomass grows. Biomass okay. grows with fresh water and arable land. Okay. The problem is that we're facing a finite world. And this statistic is very important. 97% of the world's water is in the oceans. Mm. That means that it's salt water. Of the 3% that is fresh water in the world, two-thirds is frozen. Mm -hmm. It's either in the glaciers or in or the poles. In the poles yeah. okay? So that means that only 1% of the world's water is fresh surface and groundwater. Okay? And that 1% has to be enough for all of the human activities okay. that we do. Agriculture, you know, uh, consumption, sure, no, uh, energy yeah. production, mm -hmm. everything that we do has to do with water. And so what is different about what we are doing is that we are focusing on developing biomass using salt water, using the other side of the equation, using that 97% that is 
available to us. Hmm. And the other big part of it is that about 20% of the world's landmass, about well over 25.5 million square kilometers, are either deserts or arid regions in the world. So you so, lose the arable land in that sense. And so, there's, so our focus in the SPRC is to do research and develop the pathways that will enable us to produce cost-effective, scalable, and sustainable biomass using salt water and using arid land. Well, wow, it's really interesting. Well, cool. So this is this is the focus of our, of our work, and this is why we're here. That's this fine. is why we are focused on the Middle East. We're yeah. focused in, in Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Abu Dhabi's vision is to be a you know a knowledge-based economy, and this is at the this heart a, at the heart of, of this of this specific vision. Right. We well, are we'll looking look. to develop these fuels here, develop this biomass here. Great. Well, we look forward to seeing how this progresses. It's very interesting using sure. salt water and the desert to keep And it the going. way we're doing this is Excellent. through a through a system we call the Integrated Seawater Energy and Agriculture System. Okay. And it's a system that involves three basic subsystems: an aquaculture system that produces food via fish or shrimp, uh, an agriculture system, which is yeah. a, an agriculture system based on halophyte plants. Halophyte plants are those that are resistant to salt. Okay. So okay, they grow with salt water. And a silviculture scheme based on the use of mangroves. Mangoes. Mangroves. Mangroves are the swamps. Yeah. Like for the I thought you said mangroves. <laughs> we wish. <laughs> yeah. No mangoes grow on, <laughs> well, on salt water. Yeah. Okay. And so the use of mangroves for the generation the of generation. more biomass and the absorption of CO2. Right. Well, it'll be really interesting to see how all this develops. Thanks very much for joining us. You're welcome. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.